Hello and welcome back. We are going to discuss how you can implement uh, a neural network in PyTorch. We have already done that, but PyTorch allows multiple different levels of implementation. What we had done earlier was that we had implemented a neural network or a linear model from scratch where we had parameters that we called weights and biases and we were optimizing it over it by using automatic differentiation that is built in into PyTorch. So all we needed to specify was a loss function and then uh, PyTorch took care of the, le of the rest in, in computing the derivatives. But that's really cumbersome if you want to make larger neural networks. So fortunately, PyTorch also supports a more convenient way of making neural networks that is using the NN module or the neural network module. And that makes it a bit easier to make the more larger or, or, or uh, uh, simpler neural networks. Okay. Uh, so we're going to solve the same problem that we have solved using Keras, the same classification problem. And as you can see, we have the plotted function that allows us to visualize the decision boundary. So we're going to skip that bit. And uh, there are some helper functions that you need if you are using uh, a GPU. So you need to uh, port your variables over to CUDA or to essentially move them over to your, uh, to, um, to, 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 the GPU and this function allows you to do that. So this function implementation does that. We have a function called two tensor. Now remember PyTorch uses an internal representation of numbers which we call tensors and uh, those allow automatic differentiation. So we need to convert anything that we have in NumPy say to uh, those tensors. So this function essentially does that for us. Okay, So you can use this implementation in your implementations as well. And then we have a function called to numpy, which does the reverse. You give it a CUDA tensor, it just simply gives you back a numpy array for a given variable, okay? And you can use GPU, you can specify it in the runtime of your collab, or if you're running it on a GPU machine, you can set this uh, variable to true. And if, if uh, it is available, it will be used. If a GPU is available, it will be used. So all this is simply, uh, a boilerplate code that you can essentially copy over into multiple implementations and it's going to perform as expected. So we have a classification example. We have our four inputs, the corresponding targets, and uh, we're going to make a neural network in which we have two hidden layers. We have a single output layer. The first thing we do is we convert our inputs into a tensor. So this X is going to be a tensor and we use a two tensor function, right? And we convert our, our uh, targets to the corresponding y variable over here as well. And our good old sequential is here as well. So we need, we, we make a neural network. We have, we first make a, a, a weight layer in which we accept two neurons as uh, two inputs. And there are two neurons in that hidden layer. Remember the, the order is a bit reversed. So we first specify how many inputs over here uh, then each of this uh, is going to take and how many neurons are there going to be in the hidden layer. It's a bit opposite from what we did in Keras. Then we specify what type of activation function you want. So in this case, I've specified I want to use a sigmoid activation. You can also use a rectified uh, activation function by simply specifying tosh.relu or tosh.nn.relu or something like that. You can find help on that online. So this is just a, going to be a try implementation to get you started. And then we have a linear layer in the output that accepts uh, this as many inputs as we had in the, as many neurons we had in the hidden layer. So that was two. We're going to have the same H over here and we're going to produce a single output that is D out is equal to one. Okay. So D out over here is equal to one. So we're going to produce a single output. We move our model to the GPU. That's what this is doing. We specify a loss function. We specify the same mean square error loss, except that it's going to be tosh.nn.mse loss. And then we have a learning rate in this case, and we can specify what optimizer I want to use. So, so that's all the things I need to do. I need to specify what parameters I want to optimize over. So in, in our previous example, we, we specified weights and bias. Here, since we have a model object, we just need to specify that I want to optimize all the variables, all the parameters in my model. So through this function, or stochastic gradient descent. So that's why I specified it over here. The learning rate, uh, just like we discussed that in the gradient descent. So this is alpha value that is going to be used. I specified a value of 0 0.001, okay? So what we do is we do uh, 500 epochs. So 
So this is the number of epochs, the number of passes through the training data set that we need to make. I give my example as input to the model and it generates an output. So this essentially what it does is it passes this input, this x is equal to, you know, was equal to tensor of the inputs, it passes it through the network and this is the feed forward pass of our neural network, right? And I flatten it so that I can get a flat vector, which is called y prad. And then I, what I do is I compute my loss function. Remember, this is the representation bit. We pass in an input, it produces an output. We compute a loss function. Uh, we know the targets and we know the predictions. We compute the overall loss. I just store the loss just to keep track of where we are at or how the optimization is taking place. And then this bit over here does the optimization step without me bothering about calculating derivatives by hand. All of this is the optimization bit over here. So we need to specify, we need to compute the gradients. This part does that and then it takes a step in that direction. If I want to accumulate gradients, I can move this thing around and then it's going to change the behavior of my neural network. But typically these things uh, occur together. So you first zero out your gradients, that is get rid of all the gradients that have been accumulated so far, compute new gradients for this particular input, and then take a step. And this plot over here is simply, this is the plotting scheme that, uh, that plots the error across iterations. So this is what it is doing. And once I've trained the neural network, I can print out what the prediction values are and note that these are tensor objects I, and I can convert them back into NumPy. So I write a very simple, uh, uh, simple wrapper function so that I can use my plotted function to generate the decision boundary, which looks like this. Note it, it's a bit different because I used a sigmoidal activation function. You can try with other types of activation functions. So this is a bit more, uh, it's a bit more complex than what we what we did in Keras, but it's a bit more flexible as well. You can stop this execution at any time and you can debug it. You can make more diverse type of neural networks, more, uh, uh, more uh, complex hierarchies of neural networks as we shall see. So this is more flexible. And I really welcome you to understand this. Uh, Keras is a good starting or an entry point, but uh, PyTorch is going to give you much more flexibility. Okay, thank you.